You can be angry or you can be free. You, you, you can't really be both. Howdy folks, I'm Alfonso Rachel, my buddy Bill Whittle, and this is the Wakanda edition of the Virtue Signal. You see what I did as a Wakanda? I see what you did there. You, you caught that. I, and just so people will be in the know, let's, let's just go ahead and, and play the video uh, uh, from, from Miss Thang here. Yeah, and the, uh, Wakanda is, um, is essentially, it's Black Panther 2. There, there it is. Forever! No woman, no cry. This message is to all our would-be accomplices and white allies. This message is to all the white people who have BLM in their bio. If you really want to prove to black people that you love us and you care about us and you are down for the cause, do not go see that movie opening weekend. You buy your ticket, you give it to a black person or a black family who can't afford to go, and then you go sit at that theater in front of the doors. You make sure that every black person in that theater can enjoy that movie in peace. You make sure that you use your body to block us from anybody who would be coming in that theater to do us harm. That is your job. Okay, so now, now Bill, man, I, I know that if it wasn't for you doing the, um, the Daily Wire this weekend, you know, with that series mm -hmm. that you're doing, I reckon you would have been in the theater, despite what she First. said. Camping out on the sidewalk. That's right. No, no, you would have gone into the theater. I'm pretty sure you would have been in there with your popcorn and your hot sauce slash pepper spray. And you would have just gone ahead and enjoyed that movie. Can I get can I get a witness? Yeah. Um, look, uh, so obviously you're a black man in America and I'm a white man in America. And we both know really that for white Americans, there's nothing really makes a weekend complete than going out with their family, having a nice dinner with the people you love, and then finding the nearest uh, movie theater so that you could stomp down the door and go inside and murder <laughs> black people. That's what we do for fun in this country. And that, of course, is 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 what she's complaining about. Mm. That last line is, you know, you need to stay outside the theater, white people, and block the exits so that other people don't come into the theater and do us bodily harm. Mm. And I would personally be very curious to know if she could find a single example ever of a white person going into a movie theater doing black people bodily harm. It's an interesting um, contrast uh, with the show that I did this week for The Virtue Signal talking about real communism, right? Mm. In order to have the outrage necessary, in order to turn the outrage up to a, you know 11, you, know, you have to have a, a genuine threat. You can't just say, uh, well, you know, I was at a movie theater and, and a white person ignored me completely or, or whatever, right? It has to be, no, I was under attack. I was actually under physical attack. I was actually under lethal force physical attack. And all of this is simply designed to, to do two things for that particular individual and the many, many other people like her. One of them is, is it, it gives, she thinks it gives her moral status, right? Mm -hmm. Moral authority. I am such a victim that any moment now, mm -hmm. any moment now, uh, white people could bash down that door and, and just take me out and, and, and nail me to a cross as they do so many times every day. So it, it raises her status. And it also provides a fig leaf for the inherent, innate, overwhelming, overbunding, overabundant, and overflowing hatred that this person has in their heart, period. Mm -hmm. This is a hateful person yeah. who's filled with hate. And what this does is it gives her a fig leaf and a cookie <laughs> in order for her to be hateful. And she gets to not only gets to uh, pretend to be a victim and raise her status that way, she also gets to create a threat to justify the amount of vitriol that is just oozing out of every pore on her body. Man, yeah, you, 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 got, her, you got her down, man. And now, is it just me or I agree with her to an extent like when she's saying that because she's talking about her her white BLM allies. This is like, I guess, her initiation for them. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so evidently we know that there's nothing that anybody can actually do that's good enough. But I'm going to take a cue from her, Bill. And, and, and what do you think? You think that she would go with something like this or is this a fair question to her? 
While she's telling these white allies to go stand and guard the movie theater, wouldn't they be better positioned to go use their bodies to go guard the abortion clinics where black people are being murdered like wholesale? It's like, wouldn't that be a better use of their bodies? I mean, I and 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 all the people that she's talking to, her allies, these are these are pawns for the Democrat Party. And those are the white people that she should actually be scared of because they do have a history of going into crowds of white people, like in a black church and blowing the church up. So that would be the very people that she's a pawn for. Am, am I off? Am I giving her a bad suggestion? Uh, no, not at all. Um, and uh, in, in the show I did, we were talking about why if you really want to defend communism, the most important thing you can do is know as little about it as possible. Uh. <laughs> Same is true for abortion, right? Mm. Uh, you you have all of these white liberals, mostly white liberal women, or at least are the most vocal ones, talking about how they'll get out there and they'll defend Planned Parenthood's uh, right uh, to to uh, carry out abortions. They'll carry that. They'll carry out that fight to the death, mm. to their own death for a change. <laughs> uh, and and when you try to confront people with the fact that Planned Parenthood was founded by Margaret Sanger. And the purpose of Planned Parenthood was to exterminate as many black people as possible, mm. to get them out of the the gene, get them out of the gene pool, get them out of society mm. by by basically making it easy for them to kill their kids by pandering to their to their um to their emotional justifications and of course financially making it as easy as possible. Margaret Sanger was a eugenicist. You want to talk about a white supremacist. This wasn't a woman who just thought she was better than black people. This is a woman who spent her entire life creating a structure to murder black people. Negro project. That's right. And she pulled it off. Mm. So yes, I think I think Miss Angry might have other actual people. But look, I mean, you you, you know, this woman comes out with this, and I and I had this argument uh, before. The number one cause of, of black people dying in this country from murder, from, from violence, is other black people. It's, it's young black men. When we were talking, uh, I, last time I had the statistics, right around the time that um, the Black Lives Matter things, it was before that actually, it was another one of these police shootings, right around the beginning of Black Lives Matter anyway. The latest statistics I had when I first dealt with this were from 2017 for the FBI. And they said that of all of the blacks that had been murdered in America in a year, the number that had been murdered by policemen under any circumstances. So in other words, that would include, forget about unjustified shootings. If somebody walks up to a police car, fires four rounds into the car and the guy shoots back and kills a guy, that's in here too. Mm. They said it was 4%, right? 4%. And virtually all of the other 96% of the murders of black people were caused by other black people. And they were caused by other black people in inner cities, which have been run by Democrats exclusively for the last hundred years. And, and so there's no seriousness to this, right? Mm. Cops executing black people is not a thing in terms of the, the if you look at the total numbers of death, right. but what is a thing is death by Democrats. That's, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a, a that's a plague. That's a that's a scythe cutting through the the black population, and as you so correctly point out, they also have this shiny building with the you know the glass doors, and and you just walk right in to the um, to the abattoir that this woman created in order to actually do what this lunatic thinks white people want to do inside a movie theater. Absolutely, I mean, because I'm and I'm wondering. Is uh, is Nancy Pelosi gonna be out there kneeling in front of the movie theater, uh, you know, uh, making sure that people can't pass? That she's got her gavel, being like, "You shall not pass." <laughs> uh, I, I guess you know she wouldn't be very effective because she wasn't able to keep that dude out of her husband's house uh, or out of his bed. Anyway, so no, I, I, I should, uh, never mind. Sorry, forget I said that. Uh, but no, for real though, th th this woman goes on to say, Miss Thing goes on to say that she wants white people to buy a ticket mm -hmm. and and <laughs> and give it to a black family that can't afford it. <laughs> that's right. And I'm like, that's not very Wakanda of you. I mean, Wakanda is about this self-sufficient, high tech, uh, resourceful community 
that that is that is self reliant proud and ind- proud and independent absolutely you know and you're going to tell you're going to tell white people to find a, a black family to be dependent on them you, it's like they're supposed to be the heroes rescuing people in this movie but these white people need to be the ones rescuing these people from the lack of the ability to buy a ticket to go in and see this movie white people are not allowed to go see this movie of a character created by two white people <laughs> so bill you see what i'm saying when I, am i off yeah. when i say that these people no, are you're not off and so you're not off and and the, the, of, of the many things that you are just profoundly good at, at, at not only explaining but constantly bringing to people's attention i think probably at least in this day and age the number one thing is how is how it's the democrats and the left that are constantly 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 saying mm that there is white supremacy. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're the ones who are not only saying it, they're the ones who are the ones believing it. Yes. What this woman is saying is, is that white people must go out and buy tickets for black people to go and see this movie because black people can't afford to go see a movie. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and what she's essentially doing is she's saying, you, you, people who can't afford not only to buy movies for yourself, but you can buy a bunch of tickets. You need to go out there and take care of these poor crippled infants who are not capable of getting an ID, not capable of riding the bus, not capable of anything. They're they're using this victimhood status. Mm -hmm. And what they do every time they open their mouths is to, is to come to some version of you, you horrible white people, need to use your inborn natural superiority uh-huh. to give us some money that's what she's saying and and that is a, a, a not only a, a forget about the the racism towards white people and, and and all of that hatred which unfortunately once that starts to continue to gain steam the people on the leading edge of this thing are there it's happening out there right now they're getting more and more violent because they're really beginning to believe you know that that, that white people do burst into movie theaters and grab black families and take them out and beat the crap out of them. Uh-huh. Um, and ultimately, it's also, I think it's a, it's kind of like, the Democrats are very good at this. When they know they're going to be attacked on something, they launch an attack and accuse the person who is uh-huh. the justice seeker of doing the exact same crimes that they have done, right? Yes. And so what, what this person... And I'm not talking about this one person. What this narrative of of blacks preying on whites is doing is it is it is providing cover for the fact that any any person in this country knows that precisely the reverse is true, mm-hmm. right? That the black on white crime is I don't I I, I used to have to, I, I think it's something like 25 times the amount of white on black crime mm-hmm. and. And so by constantly talking about white on black crime, it doesn't exist. They are not only they are not only pretending that the that the real problem is there, but they're not addressing it. So all of this stuff about I love black people and I'm trying to protect black people from you white people is like, look, if you really love black people, you would get down to business about what is actually killing black mm-hmm. people, and you would stop telling black people that they're dependent on white people to come in and 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 spring for a movie ticket for them. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, and, and what's going and now it's considered racist to call these things out. And if we didn't care and if we were racist, we would just be like, you guys go ahead and be left to your designs. You go ahead and kill each other and the world will yeah. be better off without you. But no, we're the ones saying, hey, can you stop doing that, please? You're destroying yourselves. And, and unfortunately, it drags the rest of the country down with you. I'm, I'm not going to lie and say that's not a concern, too. But it would be really fabulous if you guys would stop doing this to each other and, and going down this road. You know, but. You know, what this woman is doing, I don't, it's over, it seems to be over her head that she's a saboteur. It's like, woman, why would you want to, and, and, and we'll, we'll wrap up with this, folks, because we, we, we probably ha- end up having too much fun. But th- why would you want to sabotage the opening weekend of this movie? It's, that's like, I mean, I wonder if she would understand that, like, say, for instance, Barack Obama, if every black person voted for Barack Obama and that was the only community uh, to vote for Barack Obama, he wouldn't have won. 
We're only like 13 percent of the that's population. Right. No, that's right. Absolutely. White Americans elected him. No question. OK, so now with with the with the Panther movie for it to have. And I think it had a pretty successful box office week. It must have been a, a lot of disrespectful white folks that decided that they wanted to go see that movie anyway. All right. If only they'd known. Yeah, if only, you know, so and I'm pretty sure they saw this and it was just, well, you know what? I don't pay attention to black people anyway, so I'm not going to listen to her and I'm going to go see this movie. Is is that how it went down? But it's like, look, this stuff like this, this gaslighting, this, this, you know, instigating and things like this. She's a tool, folks. She's, she's an a, agitator. Absolutely. Yes. She's a tool. And it's it's meant to get us to get sick of each other. You know, can, can I add one thing to this? Please. When there was when there was genuine white racism on the part of Democrats mm -hmm. after the Civil War and before the Civil War, obviously they were slaves, but after slavery, uh, in the in the South where the Democrats had the Democratic Party left the Union and became the Confederacy. So one of the problems that the that the white racists had was what constitutes a black person? Mm -hmm. The Nazis had this exact same problem in terms of what constitutes a Jewish person. And of all of the things that are the most disgusting about both cases, but dealing with the American cases, is this almost this mathematical kind of thing like, okay, so are you a mulatto? Are you a quadroon? Are you an octoroon? Are you seven-tenths black? I say this only to say because if you put the woman who, who made this statement uh, and stood her next to somebody who was living in Africa, mm -hmm. she'd be a number of shades lighter than that. So my question to people like this, who are constantly trying to make this case is, how, how, how much white blood can you have in you and still be black, mm. right? If your mom is black and your dad is white, you're half black, I, does that make you black? Okay, what if it's three quarters? What if it's an eighth? What if it's a 16th? At what point, at what point do you cross this, the, it, there's, it's not digital, you know? It's not digital. It's not like there's Nicole Kidman and and <laughs> and and and, a, and, a, and, and Grace Jones, right? Mm. That's not how it works. So everybody's on this spectrum of skin color. And when these people try to make this kind of binary thing, you white people are evil, we black people are good. It's like, how much, how much of this evil white blood can be in you to flip you into the into the evil camp? And this is something that's always struck me is, okay, you know, it, it's saying that white people are evil is the exact same thing as saying black people are evil. It's the exact same thing. And, and, and now you have to define it and, and they can't. So there you go. Indeed, man. And it's, uh, you know, now I'm going to have that song by Grace Jones in my head. Pull up to the bumper, baby. That, you know, that's, that's a good song to have. It's a good song to have in my head. Anyway, uh, but no, I, I think we're talking about, you know, the one drop rule here, which is very arbitrary as it is. And as we've seen, Bill, it's it doesn't even matter about, you know, in, in terms of these, the uh, the black narrative. Um, it's more based on attitude and your worldview than it is on how much melon you have in your color. You, I mean, you can be. I guess white, you know, and I'm still more blacker than you are, as one yeah. Antifa person put it. I'm sorry. My point, my point was that by doing this, they are resurrecting the most awful experience that we've had as a country, and and they're re and they're also resurrecting the most awful, evil emotions as well. You know, mm -hmm. they're doing exactly. Yes. They are th morally, they are committing the exact same crime that they are so outraged about having been done to their ancestors. Sure, sure. And, and you know, and, and the sad part of it is, is that they feel justified in doing it. Uh, you know, this this perpetual indictment that they have to carry out and have to show that they're down with the struggle. You know, and a lot of times, you know, people of her, you know, complexion, they sometimes they overcompensate, compensate, not even sometimes, a lot of times they overcompensate. Mm -hmm. They got to show that they're just as black as anybody else. And this is mm -hmm. something that they gravitate to and want to make themselves, you know, this empowered victim and play up the victim narrative to, to make themselves qualified in some sort of capacity, you know, show their outrage to make them look like they're worthy of respect and all that sort of stuff. And it's like I say, man, you can you can be angry or you can be free. You, you, you can't really. Yeah, be there both. you go. You know, and, and that's where we are with these people. And it's really unfortunate, you know, you know, it's this. You know, a, a attractive woman, you know, is going to use. Um, I mean, I don't think personally that she she doesn't come off as a stupid person, 
No. Uh, but her worldview just a hateful one. Is hate and hate makes you stupid, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's just something that hate and does. ugly too. And ugly, man. Ugly as as ug- ugly with an attitude as funky as weak old chitlins, man. It's you know, <laughs> it's it's a sad thing. So, folks. If you want to go see the Black Panther movie, you got my permission on play. Oh, well, you, thank you. You'll you probably be like me. I, I you know, and, and a confession, folks. Uh, I haven't even seen the first one. I, I th- not because of anything else. I really just don't go see Harley movies anymore. There's too much narrative that's put into it. There's too many implications. Not accusing this movie of that, but it's just I'm just jaded. So I haven't seen the first one. I haven't mm-hmm. seen this one, and I think this one is, you know, making Black Panther out to be a woman now. I don't. I don't even know. I don't care. You know, but I do care about the effects that it has on the culture, just like Bill. And uh, that's why we do these things at BillWhittle.com. The virtue signal is about setting the record straight against these perverts trying to tell us what virtue is. So if you can appreciate that, we hope that you get on over to BillWhittle.com, become a member, work them share buttons. You know what to do. Wakanda forever. All right. (laughs) Good night, folks. For Bill Whittle, I'm Alphonse Rachel. Bye. (laughs) 